if you have seen my previous app review on Ultimate Rotation Control, you will be aware of its ability to force rotate the screen, and that includes the Nexus 7 home screen. However, one of the drawbacks of this default setting is that it prevents apps from rotating to their native setting, which can lead to some serious screen issues, as you can see in these two examples. It's most commonly found in games that must be played in a landscape mode. So, if you are running Ultimate Rotation Control and you run into this problem with an app, here's what to do. Simply go into the Ultimate Rotation Control app and select the Rotate Per App setting. Scroll until you find the app with a problem, select it and then choose the Manual option. Now, when the application loads, it should ignore Ultimate Rotation Control and default to its native screen mode. So now you can get the best of both worlds with the ability to rotate the screen the way you want to and have applications rotate the screen when they need to. Here are a few small pointers on organising and managing your apps on your home screen. Usually when you install an app, if there is room it will plonk an icon on the home screen so you have access to it. If it's not there you can find it and all your other applications in the applications tray which is the middle button in your dock. To place an application on the home screen, simply long press on it until the screen changes to your home screen and then drop it in an available space. To remove it from the home screen, long press on it again and drop it to the top of the screen where there is a remove graphic. Now, it's important to note that this does not uninstall the application from your device, it simply removes the icon from your screen. To uninstall an application, go back to the application tray, long press on it, and when you drag it to the top of the screen, this time there is an uninstall option. Now you can't uninstall all applications as some, like the Gmail app and other Google apps, are treated as system applications. Also note that different launchers may work slightly differently to the methods shown here. So let's say you're at work and you find a really cool application that you want to download. The trouble is you don't have your device to hand to download it to. Well, the Google Play website can do that for you by pushing the application to your device. So find an app and click install. It will show you all your Android devices and if they're compatible or not. Sadly, this app isn't, so I'll try another Football Scores app instead. This app is compatible with my Nexus 7, so if I press install, it will trigger the device itself to go and download it. Fortunately, I have my Nexus 7 at hand, so you can see how instantly the app was downloaded onto the device. Obviously, you will need to sign into your Google Play account to do this, so make sure the computer you are using is secure. Like all devices these days, the Nexus 7 comes with Bluetooth capabilities, and that leads to some interesting possibilities, one of which is to connect a Bluetooth mouse to your Nexus 7. I can't quite think of a decent reason to do this at the moment, but what the hell, it seems like fun. So here's how to do it. As with all Bluetooth toys, the first thing you need to do is pair the two devices together. So turn your Bluetooth mouse on and press the pairing button. Once your mouse is ready for pairing, go back to your Nexus 7 and go to settings. Turn on Bluetooth and then press on the Bluetooth menu option. Now, because I had already tested this, my mouse was showing on screen, but what you will need to do is press search for devices in the top right hand of the screen. When it finds your mouse, press on it and you will be asked to put in a PIN number. Unless you've changed it, it's likely to be 0000. Press done and that should pair the two devices. Press on the mouse again and that should connect the two together and then you're off and running. Now, whenever you turn on Bluetooth on the Nexus 7 and turn the mouse on, they should automatically connect together. A couple of things to note at this point. If you click and move a mouse, that acts as a swipe gesture. The middle mouse button should act as a scroll button. And if you do have a mouse back button, that should work as a back button. Be warned, however, that this is not guaranteed to work. I've been told by many people that it simply did not work for their Bluetooth mouse. It is a little bit of a trial and error process, so good luck. Don't like an app? Nah, just get a refund. But just remember you only have 15 minutes to return it. Allow me to demonstrate.
Here is Nexus Photo Viewer, an application that enables you to plug in USB sticks to look at JPEG files. It's very early on in development, but it's a cool app with a lot of potential. It's a free application, but there is also a paid version of it that allows you to stream movie files and copy files directly onto your Nexus 7. So, let's purchase that and give it a play. Yep, it seems like an excellent app with a lot of potential, but maybe not quite ready to purchase. So, I'm going to return to the app page on the Google Play Market, which now has a refund button. It's there for 15 minutes after I purchase the app, and will instantly re-debit my Google account if I press the button and refund. Now, you may only return an application once, if you buy it again you can't return it again, and this only applies to applications bought through the Google Play Market. One thing most tablets suffer from is having to use an on-screen keyboard. They are fine for short bursts, but longer typing can feel restricted and tiring. But thanks to a USB OTG cable, you can, if you wish, plug in a full-size USB keyboard just like this. This requires no additional applications or modifications of any kind, so once you're plugged in, it will work just like a normal keyboard. And just imagine the possibilities here too. If you plug in a USB hub, you could use a keyboard and mouse at the same time. You can also take advantage of some standard keyboard features too. Using shift plus cursor keys will highlight text and control C and V will give you copy and paste functionality. Although this may vary from application to application. For more information on what a USB OTG cable can do, please see my dedicated video on the cable in the description. Most applications you install onto your tablet can be uninstalled quite easily, but system applications like the Google ones supplied with a tablet are a different matter. One reason you may want to get rid of apps is because they hog system resources or clutter your applications drawer, which can get very large very quickly. However, if you try to get rid of a system application by long pressing on it from the applications drawer, you won't find any option to uninstall it, but you can look at the application info. Also, if you go to Settings, Apps, and then swipe to All, you can also find a list of all the system applications. Now, if you go to this system application, you will find an option not to uninstall it, but to disable it. This, in effect, hibernates the application so it no longer runs. It is also removed from your home screen and the application drawer. Of course, be aware that disabling system apps can have a significant impact on the way your tablet operates, so be careful when doing this. To reactivate the application, again go to Settings, Apps and swipe to All. Now the app will appear at the bottom of the list and will be labelled as Disabled. Simply press on it and then press the Enable button to return it to the tablet. It won't return to home screens, but it will return to the application drawer, so you can add it again if you wish to. You may not realise this, but Android tablets have multiple volume levels that control different sounds on your device. Take notifications, for example. Every time you get a notification, you'll hear a noise, but the volume of that noise is independent from the master volume. The same applies to alarms as well. So, to adjust the volume levels, go to Settings and then Sound. At the top of the screen is an option called Volumes. Select that and you'll be presented with three volumes that you can set independently. The Nexus 7 battery life is solid. For average use, it probably needs charging every two to three days. Of course, it comes with a charging plug, but a nice addition to this is that you can detach the USB cable from the plug and use it to charge from other sources. So, let's plug it into a USB port on my laptop and see what happens. There you go, my laptop is charging my Nexus 7. A couple of notes, I connected this to a USB 2.0 port and it won't charge the device as quickly as plugging it into the mains. 
We have established in previous tutorials that it's difficult to plug memory devices into your Nexus 7, but the good old fashioned way of plugging it into your computer still works perfectly well. So, use the USB cable that came with your Nexus 7 and plug it into your computer. It will recognise it both as a Nexus 7 and a hard drive. This means that you can treat it like any normal folder structure and browse through folders and files, rename them, delete stuff and so on. I advise leaving alone anything that's already on the tablet unless you know what you're doing. So in this example I'm simply going to create a new folder and transfer a video over to the Nexus 7. Now let's transfer over a 350 megabyte file and see how long it takes. The next thing you need to consider is how to find these files once they're on the Nexus 7 because it doesn't come with a file browser out of the box. There are however plenty of free ones on Google Play and I've opted for ES File Manager which looks like this. Now I've found the file I transferred over, let's give it a whirl and see what happens. Israel's A team, but with a short stack. He does have a Jordan for part.